Hi, my name is Dave Martin, and here's a quick overview of the ISO 10007 standard for configuration management. Let's take a quick look at the content. The title of the standard is Quality Management, Guidelines for Configuration Management, and it's only 18 pages long. But when you take a look at those 18 pages, four of the pages are blank. And then of the remaining pages, five are boilerplate. For example, you have the cover, you have the table of contents, there's a foreword, an introduction, and a bibliography with like three references in it. But in addition to those five pages of boilerplate, you also have the start of the content, which includes scope, references, and definitions, which is like another page of boilerplate. When it comes to the main part of the content, there are a few clauses that you want to pay attention to. So there's clause four, which lays out that you should identify roles, responsibility, and accountability. And especially you should identify who are the people in charge of approving changes. In clause 5.3, it goes into configuration identification, and it gives you some guidelines for selecting what should be configuration items the different types of documents that can be configuration information or configuration items, and it talks about baselines. Baselines are a critical part of configuration management. Clause 5.4 is a big part of the content because that covers change management, and there are four sections to it. It talks about initiating a change, if you're familiar with other configuration management standards, hey, this is where you would be talking about a change request. Then it goes into evaluating the change, which is a change assessment, for example, in CM2. There's also the disposition, which is the approval of the change. And then there is the implementation, where I think of that as the change notice, the different tasks to implement the change notice, and then the audit to make sure that the work that was completed meets the intent of the original change request. And then there's clause 5.5 on configuration status accounting. First, it tells you this is something that you should do. Then it talks about status accounting information and how you should retain that information and also how you should protect that in a secure storage location. And then it mentions some suggested reports for accounting. And then finally, in Clause 5.6, they talk about audits and how you should do functional configuration audits and physical configuration audits. Be aware that it doesn't go into much detail regarding either of those. And finally, there is Appendix A, which is on the Configuration Management Plan. And in my humble opinion, this is the best part of the document. If you have never written a configuration management plan before, this will give you an outline for doing it. And it basically follows the different major clauses in the previous part of the standard. So some of the things that it says that you should have in your configuration management plan includes identification, change management, configuration management accounting, and configuration management audits. So there you have it. That is what you will find in ISO 10007.